Hi all, we're up the scenic Bewley River today where you'll see a little bit of dinghy racing, some history and a new forest horse. This one's a very sheltered trip but it still gives you around 18 k's or five and a half miles each way, starting in the marshes down at the leap end. There's neighbour Dave behind, coming away from the car and we're coming up here on Rosser who launched first in the dented Delphin. At low tide launching here is a very gooey experience so you want to get it close to the high tide. And if you're coming back into the marshes you want to make certain you pick the correct channel because you can't see from down low in the kayak and you can end up wiggling your way around the long dead end and have to go back out again. Certainly no need for expert navigation, you turn right, head up the river and follow your nose. So we're following through the moorings, the jetties here. The scenery is quite spectacular the whole way up. And a couple of miles after leaving the leap end, you'll end up near Buckler's Hard. On the way back, we'll stop in at Buckler's Hard. On the way up, we just passed it by, but it's quite scenic. It's quite interesting, very touristy. There's a pub there in case of emergency. And you'll find a very small museum, which gives a nod to the shipbuilding history of Buckler's Hard. So back on up the river, marked with these sticks. On a sunny day, you'll very likely see a bit of traffic, though the river's wide, you can easily stay out of their way. Saw a few kayaks, this of course being one of those. More traffic. We came across a family here with absolutely every floating toy you can imagine. We've got the dinghy, kayaks, canoes, the yacht. Not sure what they were missing, if anything. Got to have your toys. Along the way, there are several little inlets. So as soon as we saw one that was readily available, we headed on there for a little look around. It doesn't go back far, but the first thing you notice is the wind stops. There's no noise at all. You can't hear the, the small boats going up and down the river. You can smell the pine, you can feel the extra heat, well, I guess with no wind. Immediately transported to another place, it's so peaceful and gorgeous. Very nice indeed. So that was enough of that. Back out, meet Rosser who didn't bother coming in with us. Very antisocial. And on with the job, back up the river. So the next stretch of river is punctuated with some massive houses. It's clearly uh, out of my price range though, I'd swap if they asked nicely. Some of these have helipads, they're impressive to look at, but it's likely I won't be living there myself in the near future. But at least we get a glimpse of how the other half do live. Not a bad outlook. The opposite end of the scale, I think someone's living on that, which is not bad either. Unless you like playing football in the garden. So last corner before we come up to the main part of Bewley, or the main road, you're getting close to the manor house, you start to see the traffic there on the road, and the new forest, I guess these are seahorses, and annoyingly you've got a lovely little sign saying, no landing, no looking, it's mine. So we didn't bother doing much other than ponder the scenery, a couple of photos, and then make a move back the way we came, but with a planned stop at Bucklands Hard. So as mentioned, nine k's or five and a half miles to this point where we have to turn around. Bucklers is about half of that. So two, three miles-ish. More kayakers out there enjoying 
of a river. There's a few outdoor clubs along the road. Uh, there's kayak hire from Bucklers Hard as well, so these guys could be from any of those. I think there is even a scout camp along there somewhere. So here pulling in at Bucklers, Ross turning up. And we'll go off for a quick look around. First things first though, for whatever reason, Dave turns an innocent stroll around Bucklers Hard to a strip tease in front of my wife. Not weird at all. Outside the little museum, you've got these beams, some of the original timbers from the shipbuilding that was done here. Then inside, a bit more of a look at one of the ships, how it used to look, how it looks today, a bit different. And a model of it. It's interesting, worth a look. But we're here more for the kayaking, so we're out of there. Floating here is one of the kayaks that's just gone off for a tour. And I'm off to try and catch up with Rosser and Dave. Hopefully no more stripping out there. Wiggle through the higher boats and apply the Weetabix to catch them up. Of course other cereals are available. Soon back with them. Thankfully Dave's fully clothed this time and we keep heading south and as we get to the little dinghy sailing club it's bedlam they're all over the place which is quite cool to see them up close maybe some of these sailors can enjoy a different point of view of their little boat more of the same still up close trying to battle your way through them really without interfering with their race and then we wanted to get across to the left hand side of the river which was here so that's now across and I'm not forcing them to tack I'm just skirting along the edge of the deep channel so these guys are tacking before they hit it rather than me hence the white marker here after that it's only a few inches deep while I of course am looking for the entrance to the channel back to the car so clearly with the tide back in this spot's great you can get right back to the car almost park it straight on the roof the whole trip was 18 k's there and back it's sheltered the whole way though you still get a bit of wind will come up and down the river there but for beginners or someone who's not very confident in open water it's a great paddle it's far enough to work up a good sweat but it's sheltered enough to keep you safe a week from now i will be paddling in iceland so expect the next video to be full of orca whales northern lights who knows what else i'm sure it'll be a good one stay with us